around and welcome to our 15th Global Connectivity Conference on Real Estate. I welcome you all. Today, uh, today we will have a couple of things. I'm going to update you about the market. I have sent you the agenda uh, of our meeting. And also we're going to talk about the rent to own program, which help you to think about how you can generate income if it's permissible in your states, is permissible in Ontario. So I'm going to share some slides and we we'll talk about it, give you market update. Uh, and then we will have a, a first, uh, uh, um, uh, first bank uh, mortgage will join us. And, uh, and then we'll present this mortgage. If not, then I just saw an email came in that um, he, he, he was thinking about changing it to 11 p.m. Pacific, which is three o'clock, will be done by one hour. But I, I have all the links that I can share with you where we can provide the, the, um, the, you know, the information so you can get uh, more key. So let's start our meeting. So this is the agenda that I have already shared with you. And uh, let's go back and then we're gonna start our conference. So I'm gonna start from here. Again, I already have welcome you. Uh, this is our template for our, um, uh, we're very fortunate we have 15th of that. So the, the purpose of the Realty Coffee Talk was our goal was to create connectivity and increase awareness and building consumer confidence in real estate and promote good ethics and business practices. Okay. And since we are a member of uh, NAR, CIP designee of NAR, the word is in our, in our hand. And uh, we follow highest professional standards and goal is to create the spirit of connectivity among us to do business with each other. So you have seen this. I'll be sharing this as part of our presentation. This is a, our geographic location where I, in Ontario, serving these regions. We have Dufferin, Durham, Halton, Peel, Simcoe, Toronto, and York. This is called Toronto Regional Real Estate Board. I am also a member of Missouri Real Estate Board, which also have an it's so which is uh, a, a, a combination of 22 boards. They put together their own MLS system. And I'm also a member of that. So let's talk about the, the market. If you can look at this here, uh, these are the prices of an average home, detached home in 905 is something other than Toronto. Toronto is 416. So average house, doesn't matter whether it's a one bedroom or three bedroom, or five bedroom or luxury is 1.9, 1.95 million. And 905 is 1.5 to 6 million. So did semi-detached, almost 1.5 in, in 416, and million 110 in 905 area. Townhomes, 1 million 87, 86 or 87 in 416 and 9997. Uh, basically a million dollar in, in 905 area, which include Missaga and, and uh, uh, Brampton, uh, uh, Milton and other areas. Condo unit in Toronto 416, $820,000 and 905 area 722. This is average, but if you go by specific location, it will be different. So we're not gonna talk about right here, year over year percentage of change. So sales you can see is minus 44% for detached home, minus 38.2 for the SAMI, 43.5% for townhome and 33.8% for condo. They're all minus in sales. But if you look at the average price, it's showing detached home 14.9, 416, 16.8 in 9.05. Let's go with the average. 17.5 between both 905 and 416, SAMI 17.8, townhomes 18.8 and 14.1. So average price is increasing, but the sales are going down. So here is a statistic summary, year over year summary. Sale was minus 41.2 in April last year, this April. 
And then you can see there, sale in 21 was 13,613 and we have 8,008. ,008. New listing are minus 11.7, so as an improve. Active listing are now 12.3% 12, 12, uh, 12 as compared to April last year. So increase. Average price April to April is, has increased 15%. If you can see from there, here. So average uh, li listing day on the market is 10 days to 11 days. So it's increasing now, more time to sell. And property day on the market, 14 to 14 is zero. So same. So here is something I want to share with you is that if we are looking comparison to, let's, this is a statistic on the, on the left side is for 2020. Let's look at this. Uh, uh, statistics for 2022. March, we have 1.242 average home price, which includes everything. In February, it went 1.334 million. Then in March, it came down 1.33 uh, uh, million. And now in April, it's gone further down. So you can imagine that there is about $46,000 reduction from March to April. And then you look at about 34,000 reduction from February to March. So an average 75 to 80,000 has dropped since February. And this is what is happening now. The decline is come showing, even though there is a increase in price uh, uh, based on April to April, but we're looking at 2022 is going down. So this is a statistic I have already shared for the average prices for uh, our uh, nationally. So this is, I think in the last report, I have shared this data. The Ontario for 2022 is uh, showing a minus sale. This is sale projection. They are Ontario minus 10.4% expected. And so this is a project and obviously we're going to go look at the 23 projection change in Ontario, minus 6.4. So sale is not improving. But if you look at the, uh, the prices, Canada-wide 3.2% increase ex in 2023, 14.3% increase expected in 2022 for Canada-wide. And I'm in Ontario, so 23.2% expected an average price based on Canadian Real Estate Association and 5.7% increase in 2023. So that means the sales are continuing. The average price is going up. And I was talking to someone there. So this is information that I talk about necessary steps to achieve success, form tips, because when I am working with people, I uh, recommending and talking to people, you need to have a checklist for the buyers when they come to, your, uh, they, uh, uh, to you to do something or do business. You need to have some information that what kind of uh, taxes information you have. So you need to pre prepare a checklist that you also have a shared and listing data sheet and also prepare an estimate of closing costs, consent to advertisers required, and then also advertisement on words largest weekend advertise your listing on our MLS system, which is world's largest MLS system in, in, in the world. We also, we talk about a full fee and agreement and jurisdiction issue. I can only sell in Ontario. I can help coordinate and make a referral to you guys. And similarly, you each one of you have your own jurisdiction. So you have to share that information with me so I, I can tell. So important things to remember for foreign buyers is the estimated closing costs I need to know. Non-residents and foreign buyer pay speculation tax in Ontario. This has been changed to now 20% in Ontario. Holding money to get clearance from CRA for tax. So if you sell a property with a non-residents, they will hold your money until they give you clearance from CRA. This is how it's done in Canada. So you need to check with a consultant. Also, you need to work with a lawyer because in, in, in Ontario, all dealing is done by the, um, by the lawyer. So now foreign buyer can buy property and secure mortgage financing. That's available. 
buy real estate is not related to immigration. It is a separate. Lots of people think you buy a property in a in a, in, in Canada and you get an immigration benefit. No, they are totally separate process. So this is me, and I'm going to just uh, and. Our next uh, next meeting, I will be on 23rd June at 1 p.m. So I'm going to stop this one, unless somebody has any questions to to talk. And anybody want have any questions? Or okay, I'm going to continue my other presentation about the home ownership, and then please feel free to ask questions so we can continue the uh, <coughs> conversation. So I'm going to start the other one. Here. So this one I'm going to close. Okay. 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 I am the president of uh, Canada Express Mortgage Inc. I have a license number one three two four one. And also, I'm a principal broker of Canada Express Mortgage. My principal license is M0802130. In, in Ontario, if you are dealing with a mortgage, you have to show that. License as a real estate, you don't have to do that, but here. So rent to own, how it works, and I'm gonna share a few, few slides with you. We have a company that I'm working with, uh, is homeowner soon, and uh, I created my own presentation but they give you a concept of how you can deal with it. So basically, rent-to-own concept. The, you, there is an arrangement. You find an investor who will help to buy a property for you. And you put down payment, you maintain the property, you pay the taxes, and then two things will happen. The investor will give the money to get the mortgage and property will be in the investor's name but you will sign two agreements. One is called occupancy agreement or lease agreement. One will be buyout agreement. So it will help you to move from renting into own. And we should talk about that. The rental program in Ontario offers buyers the chance to pro, uh, proactive in their purchasing endeavors and take steps to become homeowner despite many obstacles. Lots of people have credit issues they can uh, get a mortgage approval, and sometimes they have a down payment issues, or sometimes they have the payment enough to put down, but they don't have money to close the deal. So they, they but but home to owner program, where the investor who work with you, it could be a corporation, individual, or a mortgage company who will finance that, and the ownership remains with the the investor until at the end of the lease term. So here is a rent to own in Ontario. So basically two agreements, occupancy agreement and option to purchase. So both are to be signed at the same time before the position take place. Terms and conditions needs are very complicated. So each buyer has to hire a, a lawyer, to make sure they are comfortable with it. And, I, and then when you have occupancy agreement, the tenant occupies the property and pays monthly occupancy fee. And, and there is also the amount that they pay, which have an equity portion, which is treated as a down payment. You buy a property, you will put 5% down. You have to put 5% down minimum then terms of the agreement of the lease agreement or occupancy agreement will determine how long is three years or five years. And after that time, your agreement will also, the purchase agreement will also have a value determined now, what will be the future value of the property. So let's assume that market rate average, as you can see 15% last year this year, but most cases they will use 4.5 to 5% as a benchmark appraised value. And then let's say you bought it for five, 
five five hundred thousand, and then you apply it five percent, and they will add that money into the future purchase of the property, and you continue to pay. So you make one payment, which includes uh, a lease amount or occupancy, and then there will be one amount that will be going toward down payment when you uh, secure the mortgage at the end of your lease term, and 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 this is why it's very important to understand that you act like your owner, but you're not an owner. Now, normally you in the financial side, you put 5% payment plus monthly down payment. That's the occupancy fee. And portion of that, I would just say, maybe uh, about 25% will be going toward principal, just like a mortgage. But this will be a little bit more expensive as compared to conventional mortgage, because it is being considered as a part of down payment toward your future purchase. So let's assume you put 5%, you put 25,000, and then you are adding $1,000 every month, part of the occupancy. So after five, after um, 60 months, you will have a 60,000 plus 25,000. So you have a 85,000 toward purchase of let's say 550. And so you are able to arrange a mortgage. And, and this is why it's very important for people to understand and then use this as a, a tool to make sure that if they want to, uh, at least they are on the path of home ownership. But if, if your client is not in a position to buy or arrange a mortgage at the time of closing uh, or completion occupancy agreement, they should not be put into the program because the idea is home ownership is that you're renting it. If you conventionally renting it, you're not gaining anything. But in this program, you are renting it, but you're paying a portion down payment and you want to make sure you will buy this property and because if you don't buy it, you lose everything. This is very important. And this is how you tailor. I think you have to look at uh, how in the states or something, find out from lawyers or lenders or if they have any program, something can be introduced there or not, but this is legally done in Ontario. The benefit is the exclusive use of the property while you build, build a down payment. Basically, you give 5%, property is closed, and you are adding, paying a rent and you're paying additional money, which is a part of the calculation, and then you are building more equity, uh, even though you are renting it. And then you purchase at the lower market appraised value of the end of the lease term. That means if appraised value is 10%, 15%, it is set now, let's say 4.5, 5%. It's all determined on location. And that is already agreed at the time of occupancy and purchase agreement. The benefit of ownership at the end of the day you will own the house once you arrange a mortgage. So this is the concept. Okay, so there are also setbacks, you know, and uh, rent to own properties, all properties, single family basically uh, are involved. If you don't end up buying the home, you will lose the money you gave. That's... Uh, that's uh, something to, to remember. Now, and, um, and all the payment you have done, the equity you have created, everything is gone. You don't have as much as control over the property since it's not yours. You are renting it, you rent to own. So you, you're paying everything, but you only enter into the agreement if you really have the ability to arrange a mortgage toward the end of the program. If the future value of the property falls, for example, the point and it's time to exercise the right to purchase, you may not be able to re renegotiate a lower price because you already have negotiated a price at the time of the purchase of occupancy. So let's assume the market price is going down. Right now, people who have bought property in December, November, December, January, February are now closing in May, June, July, August now and appraised value is coming lower than what the negotiated agreement purchase sale. So there are lots of issues coming up where who's gonna pay the difference, where this money come from. 
and lawyers are saying, hey, we're going to have more deals, defaults happening. So this is why it's very critical being a CIP professional, not only we're working locally, but we're globally, we have to make sure whatever we're doing is service to our client, we protect their interests. This is part of our fiduciary duty. And this is why we're well educated. Imagine how much experience we have in our team that to, to facilitate and integrate, pick up a phone call, Frank or Tahir or anyone to use that uh, knowledge and experience to make sure we don't make mistakes. So it applies to anything. So basically you bought something, the price goes down, you're stuck with it. So if you don't pay your rent or any time, you could lose your right to purchase. That's the other a, a, a link there. If you don't pay your rent and you have a right, because the clauses will say that, if you don't pay rent, you can't purchase this property. That means you lose that. There are many issues with the house that are not unaware or until you buy it. You know, if they are not properly maintained, there is no inspection reports, things like that, you will, you will have discovered something. So this is very important to have a home inspection. You could also be the victim of a rent to own scam if you don't do your due diligence. There are lots of people thinking that I can do this for you, but if you don't do, uh, due diligence as a part of a, being a CIPS professional, this can happen. This is happening. This is process is now happening in Ontario. It's very legal rent to own program. Now, be sure to scoop out the program in great details and get some advice before signing a rent to own contract. This is very, very important. If you have this program there, please make sure that you are able to do that. So in summary, we're going to make it short. Summary is that down payment is a challenge. When you go to rent to own program, because your, your challenge is you don't have down payment and, and you're trying to buy a significant amount, closing costs, things like that, this is why this rent to own become attractive. Sometimes you have a bad credit that distracts the buyer to buy a property. So the difficulty to, to buy a home, uh, can, traditionally, conventional system, how we get the mortgage, get pre-approved, that is why this program. Rent to a program will provide an opportunity to become a homeowner. That is the whole idea behind it. It costs a little bit more money, but this is where the idea is. Idea is to share. So thank you very much. I'm going to stop the screen and then share with you. Any suggestion? Of what, what is the program in, in the United States? Yes, Christopher. Go ahead, Christopher. Oh, okay. Hello, uh, uh, Sophia, could you please turn off the mic if you're talking to somebody? Okay, we're going to start from Rory. Any comment, any suggestion? Go ahead. Um, I wanted to find out if you would like me to touch on just some of the coming international events that are going to be at the NAR convention in November, because I have those dates and those meetings. Please. Cut. Go, okay. Go, go, just, go just for go. anybody who's interested. So many of you know the NAR convention is going to be in November in Orlando from approximately the 9th through the 14th. Most of the global and international events are gonna be the 10th, 11th, and 12th. Um, most importantly for this group, um, the CIPS advisory board will be on Thursday, November 10th from 9 to 10.30. I sit on that. Yoshi is chair, Helen Marston is, is vice chair. It's a very large um, group. Immediately after that at 11 o'clock is gonna be the Global Business Council's Forum. Um, same day, five o'clock on Thursday, there's gonna be an International Realtors Welcome Reception. So that's all on Thursday the 10th. On the 11th, there's gonna be a CIPS designee celebration from 1.30 to three. So this is all Eastern time, of course, um, 1.30 to three. I did go to uh, the CIPS and global events that were in Washington, D.C. 
um, a few weeks ago. So this is gonna be everybody since May. Um, there'll be the pinnings. And then finally, the last thing I have for November is Saturday the 12th from seven to 11 at night will be the international night out. So I just wanted to share that. Well, definitely I'm planning to come uh, this conference. I'm very excited that it's been a long time. I've never been there. So um, I hope that I, I'll meet all of you in the conference. And uh, I am very excited to come because right now uh, I got my fourth uh, booster shot. So uh, nobody's wearing a mask anymore here. Yeah. So that's right. Or Florida. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Amazing. So I just got a text from the guy. I think he's confused with the timing, but I have, I will share the information with you about this mortgage. So I'm going to ask, thank you very much, Rory. I suggest that if you don't mind, uh, you can uh, you can crea create a one pager and you can share it in our group, Global Real Estate Professional group there that these are the events. So I would uh, appreciate if you can do that for us. Uh, recording will be shared, but if you want to share one, one pager and showing these events and uh, and uh, I would really appreciate that. No problem. I'll put it on the Facebook page. Okay. Now, Frank, you yeah, tell just, us what's going on and then uh, we'll go from there. Yeah. Just real quick. I'd like to add to um, Rory's update there as it relates to Orlando specifically, our association is going to conduct uh, their global Congress uh, meeting on uh, November 9th, the day before the, the global activities start um, with NAR. In addition, the day before that, on the 8th, uh, the Orlando uh, Regional Realtors Association will be hosting a inbound trade mission, uh, of which we will be um, extending that to probably CIPS designees, as well as um, all of our international uh, attendees. Uh, and that'll be showcasing uh, a number of uh, developments uh, in the area uh, that are emerging developments, uh, new construction uh, and, uh, and so forth. So more to come on that, but I just wanted to kind of put it out there as a save the date kind of thing for folks. Um, and we'll certainly, once we have the, um, uh, the flyers and the, in the logistical information, we'll be sharing that uh, in the Facebook page uh, to hear. Oh, thank you very much, Frank. I really appreciate that. He's a mentor and educator for everyone. And I really appreciate your participation and sparing time for us because that's the power that we have created that connectivity. We learn from each other. And uh, very soon I'm going to be, I'm waiting for my builder license. Uh, so I'm going to be a warranty builder in, in, in Ontario. I can build low rise and also luxury homes or whatever. So it's always because I, because I have an engineering background and I spent, uh, I took seven courses and uh, to complete that and they were, uh, month yearly courses. I was I was able to do two courses a day, and just pass them. Pass them. And it was good because of experience and knowledge that we learn from each other. That's what it is. So thank you very much. I really appreciate your participation, uh, Dio. Your turn. Can you please open the mic, and then we're going to go to each one of you, our participants. You want to say something? Um. I'm just like to go back to the program that you mentioned, rent to own uh, property. Yeah. Uh, we do have that program existing in Florida, but that up to the uh, homeowner, they want to participate in that program or not. And they processing the program similar to your, the tenant had to sign a two contract uh, and uh, they would not ask the tenant to put down the, uh, uh, down payment, but they will uh, take ten percent out from the rent they put into the extra account, and that will torch in the down payment uh, by the time the tenant ready to buy the uh, property. However, that property nowadays very rare, very rare. Um, the owner would push that program and provide that to the tenant because we got so many property available, a lot of opportunity and the interest rate is low. So I haven't heard that program uh, 
being offered to the uh, tenant uh, in Florida as an offer as a, like 10 years, 15 years ago. Yeah, see, this is, the reason, this is the reason I pointed out because I'm giving you thought, a thought process, think about it, out of the box, something that you can do to generate income. It's, it's not a referral program, it's just educating and creating opportunity that we can do business in a different way to make money. Because if we are down or shorting of listing and we can be creative, uh, bringing investments or builder, each state will have its own program. And I, I was sharing some thought about what, how it's being done in Ontario, but this is what you do it. If you are, uh, you are the one that, who know about it, you should share that. You may have a lot more deals if you can promote that concept, okay? So I thank you very much for sharing. So I'm gonna ask uh, Ida, I think she was there. Ida, can you share with us any, any information you want to before I go and uh, introduce about the mortgage information? I think the gentleman is confused with the timing. So uh, I, I have the template I'll show you uh, in the program. Okay, hey, um, I don't have anything to offer right now. But I'm glad and appreciate everybody's comment and information uh, on, on you that you're sharing because every time something is shared in a setting like this, there's always something that um, you learn. So I'm here and learning, but I don't have any anything to share right now. Okay, Thank wonderful. you for the opportunity. Thank you very much for participation. You can all can leave, uh, turn your mic on if you want to participate, get involved. I just want everyone to speak a second and after that you can uh, uh, open. So I'm going to ask Tricia, could you please go ahead and introduce yourself and uh, tell us what's going on? What do you think was happening in your market? Is there is a rent to own program or not? Or anything you want to share? Okay, good morning. It's wonderful to see so many of you that I know. Hi, Frank. So, Frank, that event on the 8th, is that going to basically sort of be a bus tour? Is there a cost? Well, actually, um, they're working up the cost uh, and they're working to get sponsors to cover a vast majority of the cost. Okay. Um, and what's interesting is they have it lined up to th their, their planning uh, includes um, taking a helicopter. I oh. think... I think it's 150 people that they'll offer a helicopter to go from point A to point B during the trade mission portion. Wow. And then there'll be buses to take the other 100. We're, we're going to cap it at like 250, okay. um, just from a logistical kind of perspective. And, um, and then I believe that they are ending the day at the um, Orlando International Airport. We're opening a new terminal there. And um, we'll have speakers there as well in the evening, like for a, for a social hour type thing. Wow, so. sounds fabulous. Yeah. So I think I know most of you. I am Tricia Lee Han. I live in the greater Metro Phoenix, Scottsdale, Arizona area. I lived and worked in Canada for almost 30 years and moved to Arizona 16 and a half years ago. Didn't know anybody, but less than a handful and I started working with Canadian buyers and sellers so probably for 15 and a half years I uh, that has been a very big niche which has brought me into the global arena of real estate and I have so much respect for the people that's here and just love all of you um, I am one of the founders of real estate pros without borders and we have a great event to please mark your calendars, June 27th. We have Jose from HSBC. He presented in January. He's the chief financial officer of HSBC. And he will be speaking again on what's happening in the economy worldwide. You know, I mean, even though he just spoke in January, I mean, my gosh, there's been so many changes. Number one is the war in the Ukraine and how that is affecting the global real estate market. And we also have um, Representative Marnie Blanco from Picasso. And that's 
timeshare on homes. So we're really excited to have the two of them presenting and keeping us all up to date on what's happening in global. So thank, thank you, you very much, Tricia. Uh, I also suggest to all of you create a, 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 a you know, about 30 second video about you, the company, the territory you have and share on our network. Okay. I believe that the video has such an impact as compared to writing a very nice essay about us, okay? But if you have a 30 second video, I'm a Frank McCannis, I am doing this, this, this. I do this, 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 commercial, residential, high profile waterfront properties. Give me a call, you know, and, and we can share that. And also, I encourage all of you to put your business card on our global network. Global Real Estate Professional Network, our focus is doing deals or listing, sharing information. Uh, so we know what project we have, something the way you can cooperate. Sometime in, in, in our system, we have an MLS system, means we can put an MLS or exclusive listing. Exclusive listing means the seller doesn't want that person to cooperate with anyone. But I, in my case, my brokerage, I adopt a policy. Even we have exclusive, if you give us a 2%, 3%, we split half with our, our cooperation. We will cooperate because you are creating more volume by doing it. Plus, you never know which buyer will come. Unfortunately for us right now, with all the labor we did, the federal government is imposing restriction on foreign buyer for two years. So that means Canadians are going USA. 15 to 20% 20, 20 has been a non-resident speculation tax that be imposed for up to one to six, uh, six uh, unit property. However, if you are buying a, a condo unit complex with a and six and up units, those are welcome. There are many opportunities. And uh, I'm working with the, quite a few investors who are trying to you know, sort it out things. And we're also working with buying a land and building it for them. And that's why I applied for my builder license. So I, because I have engineering background, so I can not only buy the land, I can build it. There's two options for that. One is I'm buying a land, I'm making money. Let's assume it takes three years to go to the approval, build the unit, takes maybe four years. The guy decided, oh no, I want to sell the building. Now you're going to sell the building and who's he going to work with? You, because you are the one who bought him a land. Now either it's a multiple building or high rise building or luxury home, that's a good money. And, and this is why, I, if you remember, I uh, buy it or build it choice is yours. I have actually a three, four hour, a very detailed course on that. But I know I shared with all of you the small version of it, uh, last presentation we have. So if you want to look at many, many real estate topics, I request all of you to please go to Realty Coffee Talk and subscribe. At least you can help me there. I have a more friends uh, watching this. These are, I think there are more than 250 episodes, including the, our connectivity conferences. They're all live, they're all on YouTube, but you just go to realtycoffeetalk.com and just subscribe and you get to see everything, okay? So I'm gonna go to now, um, I think Gina. Gina, your turn. Aloha, good morning, everyone. It's 7.40 here in Hawaii time. Oh, oh, and uh, Hawaii is doing well real estate wise. We are just like everyone else in the country. However, we do have a lack of inventory. Inventory was down 25% last month. So that's a big hit on trying to find uh, people what they want. Uh, we have still high interest in Hawaii. It's uh, deemed safe investment. It's in U.S., so people come here and they they like you know purchasing U.S. property. Of course, you can do a 1031 exchange anywhere in the U.S. to Hawaii. So uh, we have a lot of folks doing that. 
with the cyber commuting, that's still a thing here. People are still moving here to cyber commute to their workplace. And our prices in the luxury market are going down a little bit, uh, a little bit softer in the luxury market, but they're anything up to $1 million, you will still have multiple offers on here in Hawaii. Our average price is uh, uh, Honolulu a million, Maui 1.2 million uh, for your uh, median sales price last month. So, um, just a little bit about myself for those on the call who I don't know. There's a couple people. Um, I am a CIPS. Uh, I'm founder of the ARIA Asian Real Estate Association of America chapter here in Hawaii. And um, I'm a CREA member as well. Uh, lots of other designations, but um, proud uh, to work with international clients. I also advocate for fair housing and affordable home ownership. So I appreciate the topic today to hear. Thank you so much. We have a uh, private money mortgage here in Hawaii and we have rent to own. So we have two other methods, but of course, when the sellers, uh, when it's a seller's market, those options really aren't offered as much to the buyers. But when it's a buyer's market, then you know the sellers um, will consider that more. So thank you so much. Aloha, thank you everyone. Thank very much for sharing such a detailed information. I really appreciate that. And also, Gina, uh, I am suggesting each one of you to create a 30-second, one-minute video about what you just said and create your customized one and share our uh, Global Real Estate Profession Network. Because the more video are sharing it, the more is you are able to tell more about your property, yourself, your business listing, how people are buying, what are their requirements are. This is why I, I ask a DO checklist to create a checklist. So you can say it in word, maybe one minute or two, mm -hmm. keep it short and say, okay, you want to buy a pro property in Ohio? You need this, 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 and, and reach out to me. I am Gina. And that's it. By having yes. this video, it will create, uh, uh, attract you. I was very shy when we started this uh, uh, the Realty Coffee Talk about seven and a half years ago. I used to go to community center. And why is a Realty Coffee Talk is because I used to buy coffee and donut oh. and pay for the rent of people to come. And hundreds of people come, not because of real estate, because of free coffee and donut. <laughs> But at least I was attracting it. You know, then member of parliament and lots of counselors who are candidates, they start asking me, can I come to your guest on your speaker? Oh, this was going on for five years before the corona, this uh, coronavirus hit us. And then I went live, okay? Which uh, created an opportunity. And now we have this power of connectivity. All of you are joining all over the world, right? So this is amazing, this happened. And, I'm sharing this with you so you apply things there and also create a video because that way it help us what can be done because my wife and the family two years ago, they went to Hawaii and they visit all the, I was the only one left with the working because I have lots of deals to deal with it. Oh, to hear you have to come, you have to come and see it. <laughs> yes, now I am encouraging to all of you. I can promise you when I come and uh, we will be coming, uh, I want each one of you to come to Toronto, be my guest. And I, I want to meet each one of you. If anyone is traveling to Toronto, uh, you're welcome to my home. And we, we can take care of you try make attempt to meet because this is take our relationship to the next level. So now let's, let's talk about uh, the end. We're here, second week, of, second week of March next year is Realtor Quest. I think yes. we're all coming. Do you have enough room for us? Absolutely, you can come. We, can we all stay at your house to here? Yes, Our most of the time. I, <laughs> I right. have plenty of space, believe me. Thanks, so I Trish. went to Realtor Quest three years ago. It's an amazing conference, probably it's a larger attended event than NAR. So it's definitely a great event. Because my, my, my son, um, I, I have about six bedroom ho house here and uh, one my son is going to medical uh, in Missouri, Kansas City Medical. So the youngest one he decided to go to medical too. 
So I will have three doctors in my in my own son and his wife and, and other son. So I only one daughter left, and she's planning to go to you know, she's going to university, and she's also realtor. So the house is empty, and uh, I'm most welcome and uh, host you guys anytime you want to come. So it, idea again is to get to know each other. The more you know each other, is build confidence. I think we have created such a great connectivity and respect for each other and love and respect for each other that we can do business. And this is how, how many people we have, 3,600, 4,000 CIPS, how many people are really doing business or connecting on a regular basis? I was even asked by, you know, uh, other community to join. I said, no, no, we have very, everything good going for us. We are talking, only serious people are attending. So I thank you very much. So Wendy has just joined. So Diane, your turn, then we ask Sophia and then Wendy. Don't forget about Sarah. Yes, yes. I, she's up. Yes. Hi, Thanks. good afternoon, everyone. I'm Diane Buell, and I am in Austin, Texas. I'm just going to go back to, um, Tari, what you had said about the uh, rent to own. In Texas, we don't necessarily have that. We did previous to 2008, and there was a bigger market for that. Um, after 2008, there was quite some changes regarding um, Deceptive Act and um, requirements. So there is a laundry list of requirements now on our end here in Texas. So we don't see a whole lot of rent to own um, with these executory kind of contracts is what they're called here. Um, but we may see something coming down the line because of our pricing of our homes and where our market is. We have a lot of jobs open, but of course our uh, area, the pricing of what they're getting for, for income is not where our prices have jumped up drastically like many other places. So I think as I'm hearing little chirps in my ear, that may be some options for some of my other clients who are wanting to, um, you know, they have a home that they've had for a long time. That's the other stipulation is you, most uh, mortgage companies here will not allow an executory contract like that. Um, there are stipulations with that. So that has to be noted to the mortgage company if it's that. So my, I have clients who have properties that are all paid out right they may look into something like that. So in Austin area is beautiful, sunny out. We have had some rain, which is good. Um, and the commercial or commercial area is doing really well. Housing has definitely slowed down. We saw a 10% decrease from last month, uh, which was huge. Uh, our prices are now starting to be um, put down a little bit more to what our tax assessed market values are versus what the actual market is. So we've seen some of that adjustment as well. Thank you very much, Dan. Really appreciate that. Uh, yes, and and we we really excited uh, that we are sharing this knowledge to each other because one one of one of these days we're going to be doing business with each other, and I hope that we get to meet everyone. So Sarah, you're next, and then we'll go to Sophia after that, and then Wendy at the end. Hi, hi everybody. Uh, thank you for having me here, and it's, it's a pleasure. And thank you, Tahir, for such a nice you know, dedication with a uh, realtor's family, really, I appreciate. I am uh, here in uh, San Diego County. I serve in North County, San Diego. Uh, like everybody, market is very low right now and price uh, here is still sell, uh, seller market and uh, average price around, around 900. And uh, yeah, I, li I love to, you know, meet each other. This, I guess, is my second time, but I love and make, uh, you know, good business together. And thank you again. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, we are all here. We are all CIPS. We are all equal. Uh, our uh, experiences are different. This is why it's important to network and educate. And, uh, you know, we learn from each other. We may not do business, but at least we're learning and sharing knowledge with each other and helping each other to make sure we put food on the table. This is why it's very important to, to connect. Uh, before, I'm gonna ask Windy to, uh, to speak and then I'm gonna share the screen because it seems like the, the, the person from the, uh, the first bank was supposed to come in and uh, he's confused. He sent me a message at uh, 11, uh, 3 p.m. So uh, they don't read their messages. They get so many reminders. I think you all get the reminders about the meeting and especially, I want to make sure all of you are a member of Global Real Estate Professional a Network that is a private network of CIPS owned 
Facebook because I am trying to only work with the people who are on our group to participate because CIPS, you know, they have other people, but you can cater everyone. We, you know, we have people who are really engaged and, and the majority of you are coming again, talking, sharing, and this is where we, we need to connect. So Wendy, could you please introduce yourself? It's been a while. Yes, and I, I apologize. My front camera on my phone is not working. Uh, I uh, fell in the pool with my phone. That that happens here in Florida every once in a while. Uh, but thank you to here for, for hosting this wonderful event. My name is Wendy Cowan. I'm located in Central Florida. I am a certified international property specialist. And I've spent the last two years focusing more on hospitality and working with uh, investors. Um, so uh, doing more commercial work, and that's what I really appreciate about uh, Tahir's group. Um, it's, as he said, you know, people that are more serious and looking to do quality relationships and quality business. Um, just to share, uh, I am the ambassador to Jamaica for my local board here, which is Orlando Regional Realtors Association, and would love to show you why Jamaica has been the number one stock market in the world for the last five years. Um, that's a Bloomberg article you can look up. But beyond that, um, I just led a trade delegation to Dubai, and we still have lots of follow-up work from that trip. So uh, if you have any opportunities for commercial uh, off-market assets, need some of those uh, things to share with your investors, we have plenty of those to share. And um, uh, NAR annual is gonna be held in Orlando, Florida uh, this year, beginning November 9th. So if you are gonna be attending that, please make sure you get in touch with me and other members here that are in the group present um, that are here in Central Florida, such as Ida. I saw Ida there and uh, Frank McManus, um, because we'd love to connect with you, you know, beyond just what's on the calendar for NAR, you know, make sure we get into some of the same rooms together and uh, meet in person. Um, you know, it's not just about being online together. If there's an opportunity for us to connect on the ground, um, you know, let's take advantage of that. So. Uh, I will definitely be at um, NAR November 9th here in Orlando. Thank you to hear. Okay, thank you very much, Wendy. I'm, I'm hoping that our AGM of the Saga board doesn't conflict with this. I definitely will bypass that and I'll go to Orlando because I want to meet all of you. I have not been able to come to the last one because of COVID, but I feel very comfortable now and I hope everything goes okay. Uh, then we'll definitely connect. I'm going to share a screen with you about this gentleman uh, with the first bank mortgage, and, and I will share the with this uh, because what the thing will happen is when you are buying a property, foreign people are coming in. They sometimes bring plenty of cash to buy the property, and there are all fintrack money laundering and terrorist financing act issues in Ontario. Obviously, there are similar uh, restriction and control in the United States. And these, I'm working with uh, these lenders only to help you guys do the financing. I can uh, do that because my license is in Ontario. So I have connected with these people. They are really good and very aggressive, very knowledgeable. I have shared with you one link before. So I'm going to try to share the screen with you and, and then uh, he maybe we'll ask him to come back next uh, next uh, uh, next um, episode. Let me see if I still have his picture. Uh, this is one uh, we. Okay, let me close these files. And no, I probably didn't download it. So I what I'm going to do is I'm going to share the the information about uh, this program uh, with you. In, in our channel, uh, in our group. So you will have to get to know. How often do you have a challenges in terms of getting the financing with the foreign non-residents? Yes, Frank. Mike. I was just gonna say not often. I mean, we have many lenders that do foreign national program oh. um, mortgages. And uh, of course they have slightly different terms um, and requirements, but uh, generally we can we can get everyone fit in, um, and 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 moving forward. So, 
Yeah, wonderful. Well, thank you very much for all of you. Uh, unless anyone has anything special to go, I will be starting my next meeting with BDC uh, at two o'clock. So I take this opportunity. You have anything to say anything? Please go ahead before we close the program. Yes, I just want to put a, a quick note out there that uh, we are planning to go to Peru on a trade mission. And if you have Peruvians in your market, if you have a passion for Peru, uh, if you've worked with Peruvian investors, uh, this would be an excellent opportunity for you to network with uh, not only agents from Peru, but all across Latin America. Uh, they're celebrating their 25th anniversary uh, for when their- is, When is that, Frank? That the dates are uh, September 7th through the 14th. There's, a, there's the conference for a couple of days, then there's property reviews and then we will transition to Cusco for a few days of property reviews and then an excursion to Machu Picchu. So I will share that uh, flyer and the details um, in the coming weeks, but I just wanted to give you a heads up. Well, thank you very much. I, again, I request all of you to create a one pager that in, if someone buyer wants to do investment or buying a property in your area, what step that they have to go through to in order to secure a property or invest a property. General information, you know, how much it costs, closing cost, uh, property tax, lawyer's fee, appraisal fee, maintenance, or land transfer tax, uh, those kind of general information. What can a school or a hospital education, you know, just a general information just one page and if instead of emailing me if you can go to uh, make sure you all are member of global rules the professional yeah. network, share that there therefore you we can download it because i in in, our, in canada we have very diverse community if i have very specific project i'll go to that community only i talk to the member of parliament i talk to the provincial member of parliament i talk to the city council i talk to the mayor and find out where these people are, and then I say, oh, reach out to them and go to churches and you know, synagogues or place of worship to find out who they are and then say, okay, can you help us to do business? And then obviously when you are doing business, you also donate to the churches and other not-for-profit organization or charities. And we are community builders. Real estate professionals are community nation. <laughs> And therefore, we connect with people, and this is art that we all have learned, and we try to, to do it. And I really want to say thank you very much, unless I miss anyone. May God bless you all. Thank you very much for watching. We're going to schedule our next uh, uh, our meeting in June. Uh, I believe it's 23rd June, uh, and share with you. I thank you very much, please. And I thank you very much. Be safe. Enjoy the summer. Summer is coming and let's do more business. Thank you very much. May God bless you all. May God bless everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye for now. Bye-bye. <laughs>